Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is gonna be my February wrap up, aka I will be reviewing all the books that I've finished this month, plus the ones I'm currently reading. I finish 13 books in February. February I was doing my one week, one shelf challenge throughout the month, so every week I was reading a different genre, different shelf, and it will go down in history as the most mediocre reading month I've ever had. I think I've never given so many three stars in my entire life. To be honest, I'm feeling a little bit uh, the rating slum, so that may have contributed to some of my ratings, but frankly, it is what it is. I will review the books that I've mentioned. I've also been listening to audiobooks throughout the month that I haven't necessarily mentioned in the vlog, so there's a few books you haven't seen throughout the month, but towards the end, it gets better, I promise, but it's, it's, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't good. I have yet to give a book five stars this year. That kind of gives you an idea. With that said, March. I have a really good feeling. Uh, I'm currently reading some good ones. So the first book that I finished this year, this month, was Wild Seed by Octavia E. Butler. I don't know how I feel about this. Okay, to be fair, this is my, I believe, sixth book by the author. I adore her. She is now one of my all-time favorite authors. I feel like every book is a different subgenre of sci-fi and she just always makes it interesting. In this case, it's like superpowers, um, but it's so chaotic. And I'm glad that this wasn't the first book that I read by her because as I've been saying, I would have never finished it and I would have never read anything else by her. So one day when I'm done reading everything by her, I will do a video like what to start with, uh, Kindred. <laughs> Spoiler alert, Kindred. Uh, that one is like historical fiction about racism. And this one is, um, like I said, superpowers, but there's like good and evil-ish. Uh, there's definitely character Doro. Y you will absolutely hate him, but I don't really like the other female character either. So it's just weird. A lot of uh, morally gray characters, a lot of like incest really breeding, uh, trying to form uh, the ideal people because he is able to uh, move from body to body to just stay alive and she uh, doesn't die, she can heal herself. So that's kind of how it starts um, and there's just, it's dark. All of her books are very dark, right? But I feel like generally speaking, your other series always had a message of hope, sometimes very deep down, and I, I have yet to see it in this one. Uh, the thing though is that the first book, it's divided in three parts and by part three, I couldn't help myself. I actually was enjoying myself. So I'm giving it four stars, but um, I, it's just because I believe in her. <laughs> I have three more books to read from that series and we'll reassess, but I trust her. It just, li listen, there's a scene where there's almost, almost some dolphin sex. Yeah, I... <laughs> Listen, no one else could make me read this, okay? Just her. So yes, um, I'm giving it four. You can question my sanity. It's okay, it's it's Butler. Moving on. Uh, the next book was also sci-fi because the first shelf was a sci-fi shelf. This is Children of Memory by Jane Tchaikovsky. This is the third book in this series. Book one is one of my all-time favorite sci-fi, First Contact with Aliens. And the third book, the first half was so good. It was a five stars, and then the second half, I didn't care for it. I feel like every time, I'm keeping this spoiler free, but like every time things go further and further, and the concept was again super interesting at first, uh, to give you a little bit of an idea, it's like whatever happens with book one and two, you know, humanity, aliens happening, and then in this one is a different pocket of humanity on a different planet that has tried to survive, and you get vibes of like, you know, small town, like, they talk about others, like is it aliens, is it just like stories, like what's going on on the planet? And that was so good. And then, I don't know, I feel like the second half will be, will divide people. Um, so for me, this is probably like a 3.5 stars. I really wanted to love it. But at this point, I don't know if the author is planning on continuing the series or not, but at this point, I'm kind of done with this series, no matter what happens. Uh, so this is a finished series for me. So I'm happy about that. But I'm kind of, like I said, a bit torn about it. I can't wait to hear other people's review. It was a pretty chunky one, so I'm happy I went through it. I was super excited about, you know, this is a new release, but I feel like the author has great concepts. I do want to read more by him, but like I said, I think I'm done with this series. I did finish uh, two audiobooks afterwards. Uh, the first one was What My Bones Know, which is a nonfiction memoir and uh, absolutely <laughs> not traumatizing, but like a very tough read. It's about complex PTSD. The author talks about her childhood and her relationship with her family and just trying to survive after all that trauma. 
I really enjoyed it. I would say the first 75%. And it feels so rude to say that. But again, I wasn't as invested in the end. I refuse to read this book. I feel like this is the kind of nonfiction I'm so uncomfortable reading. So I do recommend it. I feel like this was great. Uh, I've been seeing it going around and I wanted to listen to it. And it was great. Just again, a tough read, of course. Okay, the second one is another series uh, I am giving up on. I am. I, I think I'm done. This is uh, a cruelest, The Cruelest Month by Louise Penny. This is the third book in the Inspector Armand Gamache series. <laughs> oh my gosh, flip-flopping is too hard. Small town murder mystery uh, in Quebec, so like French-Canadian representation. But I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I feel like... I love the characters, the people that live in a town, but I can't be invested in the story. And I do feel like it didn't really age really well. Some descriptions are just ugh. But I really like Ruth as a character. She's like the really rude, mean, old uh, poet. And then you have, uh, is it Myrna? The owner of the used bookstore. She used to be a psychologist in a big city and then I they seem cool but I just don't really care about what actually happens in the story so I think that I'm gonna just watch a tv show which feels wrong but I've only watched the first episode and I just love the flip-flopping between French and English. I feel like it's very us and the first episode I couldn't stop laughing because the the officer acted the way she was acting was so I could see people I know you know acting this way so yes I am investing emotionally in characters, but not in the story. So I think I'm just officially giving up. I gave it three books. That, that was more than a fair shot. So TV show it is. Um, maybe three stars. Yeah, like I said, kind of mediocre. The second shelf uh, ended up being the Stephen King shelf, the dreaded Stephen King shelf. I feel like I was kind of done with Stephen King. I feel like generally speaking, I feel like he is a little too good sometimes at writing really awful, horror books. He's great at it. A lot of like sexual trauma or like religious trauma. There's a lot going on every time, but I feel like I was never satisfied with, especially the endings, they always suck. Like, I don't want to read a thousand pages to be disappointed. And I feel like some of this stuff was kind of just a bit too far, I guess, for me, but it was the shelf. So I thought it would be a good time to clean up that shelf. And I did DNF the first one, my only DNF of the month, honestly, I should have DNF more books this month, uh, was the second book in the Dark Tower series. I am officially done with the series also. So, you know, good for me. But afterwards, I pick this one, which is uh, The Dead Zone. And I ended up really enjoying myself. I feel like this is kind of a airport kind of book, but a good version of them. Like, I couldn't put it down. I was actually really excited to pick it up, which I was feeling the reading slumps. I was really happy to feel that. Um, I didn't feel like the ending was awful, but it wasn't also amazing. It was just something that you read and forget about, kind of. And it's probably like a 3.5 stars. But, you know, I'm not mad at it because, again, made me realize that I'm just in a slump. I was actually enjoying this one. And uh, he did not disappoint also with the sexual weirdness in this one. I, I do want to mention it again because it's why. Basically, this kid is like 17 or something and uh, he just figured out that he enjoys reading. And page 479. And like a boy who has just been initiated into pleasures of sex by an older woman. Why? 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 Um, so yeah, he always does that. That's what I mean by like, I can't deal with him. <laughs> like it has nothing to do with the story. But in this case, you follow this um, uh, man who got in a car accident, hit his head. And uh, when he wakes up from uh, a coma, you can kind of figure out what's going to be happening. See kind of futures, visions. And it becomes a bit more like political intrigue, but it's very, very quick driven character driven and I kind of enjoyed it for what it was but yeah it, it's not going to be something I'll think about in the future but it did what it needed to do okay shelf three was classics and I read three uh, I decided to pick some of the uh, Sherlock Holmes books I realized in the vlog I didn't mention the names of the stories but the first two they were linked they were mentioned in the description box but I read the first two uh which were a Study in Scarlet and then The Sign of Four. And again, incredibly mediocre. I feel like classics, some of them like don't survive the test of time. Everyone has a different definition, but like I can acknowledge that this as a character, it was revolutionary at the time, but I feel like reading it nowadays kind of feels flat or just even worse than that. The TV show's 
were great. I feel like the characters just makes more sense that way. Uh, in this case, it just felt kind of boring. The way it's written, like, you're not solving the mystery with him. You're just being told that, oh, this is what happened. And it just feels kind of a letdown. And the first story specifically, there's two parts to it. Uh, when you get to the second part, you just start, start following a completely different story, which is following like Mormons finding Utah. Like, it was just, like so out of nowhere. Um, and also some, um, you know, racism, sexism included in here. It's a classic, but um, you, you know, I feel like I can look past these things a little bit. I'll still, you know, mention them, but I can look past it if the story is really gripping and it wasn't. So I think I'm just going to give up. A lot of you mentioned a few of the other ones that, you know, might be worth it. So I might, I insist on the might pick up the next one. I think people were saying the Hound of the Baskville, ba Bakersville. Baskersville. So I might try that one, but I will probably unhaul the two books. This is volume one uh, in my next unhaul video. But you know, I tried it, gave it a fair shot, read two stories. They were about 100 pages though, so I don't know how fair of a shot it is, but. And the other classic I tried uh, during that week was Cyrano de Bergerac by Edmond Rostand, which is a play. I feel like it's a story that we all no, but like how much do you know? So it was my first time actually reading it and luckily uh, this is the third play I think I've read in the last year. Um, in this one they did not make fun of poor people's speech, uh, which <laughs> reads a lot like French Canadian. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, basically the love interest is like Christian and like Roxane and then you have Cyrano who's like her cousin and he's into her, but he's so ugly and his big nose. Anyway, um, Christian is a douche. <laughs> like, I feel like every time these girls have horrible taste, to be fair, she's probably very, very young, but I couldn't stand him. So I didn't understand why Sihana would help him. Like, I get that it's like, oh, I want my cousin to be happy. She's not gonna be happy. Anyway, uh, not spoiling it, but it was okay. I still need to watch the movie uh, to see if I feel like that is better, but I feel like plays don't necessarily work for me. I feel like I prefer just watching them, so we'll see if I read more of them, but I'm glad I read it. I know what the story's about now. I just thought there would be more to it. Again, I'm sure at the time it was revolutionary and I feel like I would get more uh, personality, more depth if I were to actually watch the adaptation, but you know, I read it. Another three stars. The next shelf was the infamous shelf 16 which contains mostly YA fantasy a few people were mentioning there are some adult ones yes it's just a junk shelf for me um yeah it is what it is I'm trying to you know declutter which is why sometimes challenges like this one help uh but the first book that I picked from that shelf was Sabriel which is a YA fantasy I feel like I used to see this everywhere as such a great fantasy why it's so good but it was okay once again incredibly mediocre I feel like this is something that I 100% would have liked more if I had read it at like age 12 I think I'm gonna donate this to a small library I feel like kids would love this like I would have loved this as a kid uh you follow this girl who is a necromancer her father was and he has been teaching her but he disappears gets killed and she has to go and save him it was good for that um but again I wasn't super emotionally invested and I feel like I would have probably liked it more if it were an adult book. There would have been more depth in the magic system, the world building. But for what it was, it was fun. It is what it is. Again, three stars. <laughs> Shocking. And then the other book that I read was uh, The Queen of Atolia, which is the second book after The Thief. I wanted to decide what was going to happen uh, with this series for me. I believe this one is considered adult. Um, again, it was okay. I feel like it took a good 200, 250 pages to actually start. So it, it was rough. It's very character driven, like a good example of like telling instead of showing. And towards the end, things completely change and it was okay. I feel like the romance comes out of nowhere, but it is what it is. Three stars. It's probably should have DNF'd it to be honest, but I continued because I knew I wasn't going to continue the series. So giving up on this one. Uh, one book that I didn't tell you I was reading, I listened to the audiobook of Their Eyes Were Watching God. I was planning on reading this, it's a classic, and a lot of you told me to listen to it as an audiobook because of the way it's written, it's um, dialect, 
and English not being my first language, sometimes it can be difficult, especially reading that. So I, I'm grateful. So listening to the audiobook was good. However, I think that the reading slum kind of ruined it a little bit for me. I still liked it, but I feel like once again, I wasn't super emotionally invested. The slump is the slump, right? So I overall enjoyed it. Uh, incredibly sad. Uh, you're following this woman, her life story and all her husband <laughs> and just horrible stuff happening one after the other. And I just, I don't know. I don't know how to rate this. This is probably 3.5 or up. I just need a few more days to digest this, I guess. But I just felt very sad. So if you're looking to feel a bit depressed and read a classic written by a black woman, <laughs> Two for one. Uh, but yeah, it was good. It was good. Another mediocre one that I'm giving up on uh, the series is The Man Who Died Twice. I swear this is another one that I should have liked more than I did. I think it's The Reading Slum. This is a murder mystery where you follow a group of really old people. <laughs> they're like in their 70s, 80s, and they're solving murders, and I love them. The character is super likable, but once again, I wasn't super invested in the story for whatever reason. I did laugh a couple times. I was listening to that one as an audiobook, but for some reason, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I This one and the last one, I feel like it's 100% a slump, but... I finished this. I don't think I'm going to continue the series and yeah, don't listen to me for that review. The best book that I've read this month uh, has to be North and South, which a classic is the best one. Woo um, I enjoy the social commentaries in this one a lot more than I expected. I went into it to it knowing nothing. All I knew was I had seen like a part of uh, the episode, the TV show, and I thought this was going to be like Pride and Prejudice, which to be fair, uh, a good chunk of it in the beginning, there's definitely some pride and some prejudice. <laughs> it could have been called that for the first half. And I was very emotionally invested. I absolutely hated the romance. I I feel like so many classics, I just feel like I wish the female character would just end up alone. Is that awful? I felt the same way with, um, what was it called? The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. I, I just don't want them in relationships basically, but Anyway, I was very emotionally invested and I really enjoyed, I just, just finished this. I feel like I'm going to need a few days and I do want to watch the TV show. I put a bunch of post-its and I, yeah, I think that's my review. Great social commentary. I feel like this would be amazing to actually talk about in class. Some books that that's what you want, right? I feel like this is a really good book that I would have liked a teacher's background. Like I feel like there's just probably a ton of social context, political context that I'm not getting and I will have to look it up once I finish the TV show. But yes, this was great. Four stars. Yay. So two four stars this month, you know, can't all be three stars, but yes, this was, this is going to be one of my favorite classics for sure. Now let's talk about the ones that I'm currently reading. Um, one of them I can't tell you because it's a challenge I'm currently doing. Basically, the cat has been choosing my TBR or is going to be choosing my TBR, so can't tell you. However, I'm still reading this. Uh, don't judge me. Women, race, and class. Women, race, and class. I'm almost done. Like, literally almost done. Um, I have, like, not even 30 pages left. It's just, it's been taking me forever. Reading slump. And I just started the change as an audiobook. And oh my God, a few of you told me when I mentioned it in my library TBR that I was going to love this. Yes, I am 13% into it. And you know how a few people were mentioning a bunch of books that were like, oh, female rage. And I read them and I was like, meh, not really. This is it. This is it. And I'm living for it. You have these three uh, older women who kind of discover powers, super magical powers. And it looks like they might be about to solve a murder mystery from a uh, young girl body that was found. So yes, yes. All the rage at the moment, the character's like talking about everything she, she went through and like menopause <laughs> and the magic. And it's so far, it looks like I'm going to really really like this one. So at least I'm hopeful for the upcoming month. But yes, March was incredibly mediocre. Hopefully you had a better time than I did. If you have read any of the books that I've mentioned, please let me know your thoughts. If you agree, disagree, maybe it's the reading slump, maybe not. And I would love to hear the best books you have read this month because I could add them to my TBR and I'm sure other people could. And that's it. Thumbs up, subscribe. I will be putting more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and I will see you in an upcoming video very soon. Bye. March better be good.